Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'll be doing a bit of art journaling and I'm actually going to um, journal onto the backs of a couple of other um, journal layouts that I've already um, completed so that when you kind of look at the entire art journal you won't see any blank pages. Even though I did that I kind of feel um, like I, I don't want to do that again <laughs> because I was constantly worried about messing up because it's already part of a completed art journal layout. Um, but that's just, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so what my goals are for my art journaling session today, and I... I have talked about this before, but basically I started art journaling just as a way to have a bit of creative fun without a sort of um, kind of an end goal in mind in terms of what uh, I wanted the final project to look like. But I'm using it as an opportunity to try different things, learn different techniques, and just explore and create with out like a definitive plan, but I do still want to set some loose goals for myself. So today my goals are to do something that I've seen done a lot. I've just never tried it myself and that is to use gorgeous pa uh, paper napkins as, um, you know, part of your project. So whether it's mixed media, um, or, or art journaling, or, you know, uh, a card front. It's a beautiful, easy way to get a um, gorgeous background and really easy to do too. So I started off by uh, separating the, the multiple layers of the napkin. So this is two ply uh, paper napkins. And so I just removed that second ply. So I only adhering the um, print the the layer that has the print on it, and so um, that way you know you kind of have as thin of a layer as possible. So it's going to um, make the glue which I'm using Mod Podge will um, you know have a good sort of firm stick onto this, and it's not having to soak through multiple layers. But I'm also I'm also Mod Podging right over top too. To, to really make sure that this is uh, stuck down well because this is this is my first layer so it's the foundational layer I don't want this to uh, lift or anything because I'll be building everything else on top of this and I didn't even um, I even like crumpled the paper the napkin as you saw just so that I would have that extra texture of all of those crinkles and on on this side I'm layering the um the napkin like I'm tearing off pieces that I like and just sort of collaging a little bit I let all of that dry and you can see how beautiful and gorgeous this um, napkin is but what I'm gonna do, do is um put some gesso right over top of this and you can see actually because the napkin is so transparent that on the right page where I've layered up a of layers, two to three in some cases, you know, it is a little bit darker where there is an overlap. But what I'm going to do, none of that's going to really um, look as obvious as it does right now after, you know, this is just step one. Um, so what I'm using the gesso for, and I didn't realize how far, um, gesso goes. Y you really don't need anywhere near as much as what I poured out, but, uh, I'm using it to kind of knock back the, especially the black print. And since I got some on my fingers anyways, I, uh, <laughs> just decided to go with it and I started using my fingers, um, Art journaling is so much fun. I just love getting messy and um, just like playing. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot of fun. I'm really I'm really glad that I started doing this. But um, my idea behind using the gesso is to just kind of set you know, especially the darker printed areas, set some of this into the background a little bit more because I don't want it to fight too much with what will ultimately uh, be my focal image. And so 
I'm using I'm using that gesso to um, essentially white out uh, some of the uh, design, but um, I do want to add some of that color back in because it's it's too washed out now, and so. After letting that dry, <laughs> then um, I started with some of my uh, various shades of pink ink. Um, and these happen to be dye-based inks, but I think anything would work um, just as well. I picked them more uh, for their color than anything else. And I'm just trying to get a shade of pink that's, that's sort of similar to that base uh, color of the original napkin. And I'll um, use this darker, kind of more uh, magenta color. This is the Raspberry Jam, and I've got all sorts of different, you know, brands of inks here. So I've got uh, this Raspberry Jam one is Hero Arts. I've got some Altenew, and then of course the uh, the Nouveau Hybrid. And so I'll do the same on this side too. The other thing with the napkin is that some parts of it sort of looked um, kind of. I guess peachy, a little bit yellow tones, and I, that's the other reason why I wanted the gesso to knock some of that back as well, because my other goal with this um, art journal layout is to play with a more monochromatic um, sort of palette, and and I did stray. I did veer from that because obviously there's some black already in the napkin. And um, and then later you'll see I, I add some gold to this too. Now, I did get a little heavy-handed with this Raspberry Jam <laughs> ink around the borders. Um, so if I had it to do over again, I would maybe not... I'm never trying to get anything totally uniform. But I think um, having it be a little bit, a little bit more even would have would have been nicer. But some of that's going to get mitigated because I'm gonna actually use the same color ink, that uh, jam color, raspberry jam color, and I'm inking with this stamp set from uh, Finnebear, and these are really affordable stamp sets. So I picked up, I got three of them in my design team haul from White Rose Crafts and I checked the website they're only I think maybe two dollars and they're great for just building up backgrounds so this one is the the messy sort of handwriting style of text block I also got the uh gothic um the gothic book one and then a uh, old receipt is the is the third one so it's a nice two by three stamp set it's all one stamp. I didn't even use a block because I'm I'm not going for perfect impressions, and it just it just helps to add a little bit more visual texture to the background. And with that, by reintroducing that really dark raspberry jam ink, I think it helps to make the border look um, you know like it makes a little bit more sense also. And I picked this up from the White Rose Craft Shop as well. This is it's expanding mousse from Nuvo and there's a big sale on on um, these. I don't know if they're all or only expanding moves, but I think it's something like 58% off, um, at least at the time of my recording this video. I'm not sure by the time the video goes live if the sale will still be going on, but it's a, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic sale. And I love using expanding moose in particular because if, if you do not apply heat to it, then it basically behaves like a regular embellishment mousse. But you always have the option to take a heat gun to this after you've spread it out. And then um, it will puff up. And that's sort of the expanding uh, nature or feature of, of this formulation. And... I just think it's fantastic to have one mousse that you can use, um, you know, for both purposes, just as a regular as you would normally use an embellishment mousse, but also um, for the expanding uh, aspect of it as well. So, for example, unlike the crackle mousse, crackle mousse is going to crackle no matter how you use it. it you can only really, it's not that you can only use it in the one way, you can um, probably find a lot of different ways to use it, but it will always crackle. Uh, whereas the expanding mousse, it only expands if you take a heat gun to it. And so for my 
uh, focal images, I've uh, gone to my little vellum um, sticker pack here, and I'm gonna pick, I've already done like a short, you know, um, kind of list of focal images, and um, I've chosen a sentiment as well. And so when I put this image directly onto my page, I've got so much visual stuff going on in my background that I felt like I felt like it was hard to make out the image. And even though I, I knew I was gonna put a focal image somewhere, so I did leave the center of my page um a little bit lighter. I didn't I didn't stencil um in directly in the middle. I made sure to leave myself a good you know, gap there, but all the same, it just didn't, it didn't pop as much as I would have liked. And I'm really glad that I didn't just, um, peel the sticker off and, and stuck it to the first piece of paper that looked good to me because I, um, ultimately did not go with my first choice. So what I've done is just taken a pencil and traced along that outer edge and just fussy cut it. And this is this is the paper that I ultimately went with. It's a little bit closer to the shade of pink that is actually on um, my background. And so I think in that way it kind of blends a little bit uh, better. And that but that's just to my eye. Like sometimes when I see myself flipping back and forth, I, I sometimes like the other version more. But what I ultimately went with was this. I put it on the light pink uh, solid color cardstock to maximize the contrast of the black and white photo of the sticker. And then I used the other piece, since I already fussy cut it, I used that piece to um, kind of as a drop shadow. And that helps to set it apart from the background a little bit better. And that way it doesn't, it doesn't just um, meld into the background since since I did go with the lighter solid color cardstock that that um, matches the the base color of the page really well and I'm gonna do the same thing with the sentiment too I actually thought about leaving the love uh, word that was part of the napkin design but when I saw the just go sticker I thought um, with the Eiffel Tower there and Paris and all of that, this, this feels, this feels like a really nice sort of journal, um, or sorry, travel, you know, inspirations type, uh, type of spread. So instead of, as opposed to like a more romantic, um, one. So that's why I've, just to say, I'm just going to cover up the word love. So that's why, that's why I chose to, um, to place that sentiment there so that I could cover that up and, um, and add my own sentiment to it. And I just, I had a lot of fun. I mean, this is probably not my most favorite journal layout that I've made so far, but it's, it's still so much fun. I mean, I had so much fun putting it together and just playing with the different medium that I have. And also, I just learned a lot. I mean, you know, I, I've always wanted to try to use um, paper napkins to do that sort of decoupaging technique. And, um, and now that I've done it, I definitely want to do more of it. Um, the last thing I'll do here is just some splatters and I I don't know why I didn't think to do this first because it never really even though I tried to cover my focal image so I don't get ink onto it it um it's it's never perfect but the nice thing with vellum is that um I don't know how quick you have to be about it but I just damped uh took a damp towel and I was able to wipe that ink right off of the vellum so so in the end it worked out fine but I do um, I did have a lot of fun with this though, and um, as I mentioned, it's not it's not my most favorite layout, but you know I think that it still kind of ticks all those boxes for me in terms of my goals with art journaling. It's not always to create the a perfect work of art. It's um it's actually not about that at all. 
ever. It's more about just having a play, trying new things, learning, and um, and sharing what I've learned with you. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you'd like to uh, catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.